Kumar. I am a developer relations engineer here at AppSmith. So today I'm joining with uh, two of my teammates, uh, Joseph and uh, Pranav. Uh, so Joseph and yes. Pranav, do you want to quickly introduce? Yes. Uh, yes. This is Pranav. Uh, you must have seen my face on the stream quite a lot. So this is the fifth edition of How Do I Do X, and we have like a really cool topic today um, that we all love. Uh, charts. So let's see what we can do about it. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Hey, I'm Joseph. Uh, I'm a developer advocate with AppSmith and uh, pretty excited about today. We got some cool demos to show you guys with charting and uh, and how to manipulate objects with JS so you can integrate them into your charts with all the different uh, chart widgets that we have. So looking forward to it. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm, I'm super excited as well because uh, Pranav and Joseph are the ones who create like awesome AppSmith apps. Pranav <laughs> doing all the sample apps at the support and Joseph doing all the templates. I'm pretty much excited to see what you guys are demoing. And of course, I'll be talking a little bit about charts in the beginning. Uh, but before we get started, let's uh, wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Pranav, where are you joining from? What's the time there? Yeah. Um, so I'm joining from Pune. It's 10 30 and i'm yet to have my dinner so yeah let's just go through this quickly um <laughs> yeah a little bit of background actually i in in my previous job i worked on charts for like six months you know and it's really difficult to get everything right um because there are so many permutation combinations that you have to keep in mind but with like appsmith and the suite of customization that it offers uh, with all the other widgets, I mean, it's fantastic. The work that I could, like, I worked on for like six months, I can do it in like a week on AppSmith, you know, so that's really cool. So if you know a little bit about JavaScript and how to manipulate the objects, you're all set. And today, yeah, I mean, the application that Joseph has developed, it will blow your mind. Like, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Shall we start right, so, already? Uh, Joseph, where are you joining from? That's that's my last question before we oh, yeah. start. Sure. Yep. I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. It is uh, one o'clock here. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So as you guys know, I am joining from Andhra Pradesh, and uh, me and Trina are in the same time zone. So it's it's around 10:30 p.m. here. Uh, so in case if you have any questions during the stream, please feel free to drop them in the chat and uh, we'll be happy to answer them at the end of the session. Uh, so with that being said, let's get our demo started. I'm quickly going to share my screen. And all right, awesome. So this is the fifth stream of how do I do X session. And today, uh, as you all guys know, we will be covering how to build charts on AppSmith and uh, we have the cool new app, uh, thanks to our theming feature. Now you can, you know, see the entire customization of uh, AppSmith apps. Uh, I think Pranav had made this, uh, but this can be, uh, you know, much cooler. Uh, so feel free to test our uh, theming feature as well. Uh, so with that being said, let me quickly go through what we'll be covering today. All right. Uh, so talking about the chat widget. Uh, so this is how it looks. Uh, how the charts look on AppSmith after we deploy it. Uh, but quickly, let's go to the editor mode and see how you can actually bring a chart onto the canvas. Uh, so this is a basic AppSmith app. Uh, and the way you can drop in charts is just click on widgets right here and swore the chart here. And there you go. All you need to do is just drag and drop it onto the canvas. And voila, here you will be seeing a chart. Uh, so let me quickly delete it and uh, bring back my other charts. Uh, so all these charts are similar. Uh, they All these charts are default charts that AppSmith gives you. Uh, so I'm going to quickly go through all these properties and tell you how these actually work. So as soon as you drop the chart widget on the canvas, you can configure all their properties on its property pane. Uh, so this, is, this right sidebar uh, is the property pane, and you can see the chart type is basically set to the line chart. Uh, so if you just uh, click this, you will see a drop down on different customizations. So I'll uh, leave it to Joseph and Pranav to discuss more on how you can customize all these different uh, kinds of charts. Uh, so similarly, I have uh, copy pasted the same chart and I've created a bar type. 
I've copy pasted the same chart and put it in a pie type. And this is a column chart and this is an idea chart. So these are the five default configurations. But with AppSmith, uh, you can also integrate it with a library called Fusion Charts. And there you can have more than 100 plus uh, chart variations, uh, which Pranay, uh, Pranav will be talking more about. All right. So how to load your data inside this chart widgets? Let's let quickly look at it. So every widget on AppSmith expects put a certain kind of data in a particular structure. For example, uh, this is a chart widget. And if you go to the data here, uh, it will ask you the expected structure. Uh, so basically, the expected structure here is an array that has key value pairs. And then we'll also show you some examples on how your expected structure should look like. And the evaluated value is basically what you are uh, binding here on the widget. So this is like uh, a, a dummy data, uh, which we are uh, presenting. But this is where your queries or APIs can go. And here you can use JavaScript to bind the data and, of course, do transformations or customizations on top of it. Uh, so this is how you bind chart data using, uh, on the property pane. Uh, so you can, again, here you have two ways. Uh, one is you can directly do it on property pane. Uh, so this is ideally preferable when all your data is coming from a single query. Uh, in case if you are working with multiple queries, in case if your data requires more transformations, then uh, JS objects is something more reliable because uh, it gives like an entire code like experience for you to uh, play around with uh, uh, queries. All right. Uh, so let me quickly show you how you can bind data from a query on the chart widget. So for that, I am going to bring in a chart widget again. And then now I'll have to update the series data with an query. So the way I do it is, is basically I use the mustache syntax and then bind a query. But let's quickly talk about the query. So in this example, I have, uh, I'm using the sample database, this, uh, which is from user. So I have already created one and I have a very simple query. So uh, you have select uh, you in this. Let me quickly also show you what all different data you have. So I'm going to use this quick tool. So I'm going to write a select query here and then run this. So on my database, now I have uh, multiple col columns. Uh, now I wanted to build a chart on the number of users staying uh, in a particular country. Uh, so for that, I have a query. So I'm doing a group by on countries and then I'm returning the total number of people staying in a particular. So let me quickly run this. And then now I have, uh, you, know, you know, the results here. Uh, so there are like 62 people in Canada, one person in Brazil, uh, 73 people in the United States. And this is an empty, one, which is null. I think uh, for two records, there aren't, there isn't any country. And uh, this is all my other data. So let me try binding this query on my chart widget. So my query is named as users by country. So let me go back to my chart widget. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, let me try increasing this a bit. All right. So here I'm going to say users by country dot data. Now, if you see the evaluated value changes to array of uh, array, basically, but this is not what chart widget expects. Uh, the chart widget requires something in X, Y format, the one in X and one in Y. So I'm going to write a simple map function and then return that way. So I have a return and then I say X is item dot country and Y is item dot count. Okay, uh, that is all right. Let me quickly do this again. Okay, I'm gonna say users by country dot data dot map 
item on x is item dot country um all right what am i doing wrong here let me try using my snippets sorry for that uh okay uh all right my way i have need to use this here all right let me just stop copy snippets real quick all right so i'm going to use the snippets here and then copy this real quick and then paste it here and then update my query to users by country and then uh, let me add x axis will be the country and y axis will be the count okay let me quickly refresh this uh pranav do you want to help me out real quick yes. i i am yes i think um there is some problem with the data uh okay. can you check if both the x and y values are present over there so i see that uh yeah fifth i think there is problem with the fifth all right data. there is yeah. uh okay yeah so you can all just it. filter it out saying yeah um data dot filter and you can just check or even after mapping you can check if x is present and y is present all right uh, so i'll say if x is present yeah so then i'll say i'll uh, yeah just add anything like this no 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 uh, you can add after map function you can add a filter so say dot filter and then okay. create a function not after that um, let the map run yeah okay. and there is a last okay, bracket okay after yeah. this yes say dot okay, filter dot filter and you can say item okay item and then arrow okay and now uh, you can return true or false uh, by doing uh, item dot x and and item dot y so that means if uh, the data is there yeah okay did uh, yeah so what is it saying now can you uh, zoom in a bit more yes uh, so uh, that's the malform arrow function okay i think there is a problem with the brackets somewhere oh yes there is a bracket problem right after filter you did not finish the uh, round uh, bracket yeah there is no round bracket there so here yeah can you add one more round bracket over there okay uh, and finish after y yeah can you finish that yes okay. now it's there. dot filter, filter is, uh, is all right let me actually try creating i think someone had someone might uh, you know play with my data a bit let me quickly create like uh, you know one more new query here and see if okay why is it saying football okay i am users new query select let me okay can you check right. yes uh, can you just limit it to 5 and it will be All right. yeah just limit it to 5 limit 5 yeah space 5 yeah that's it and can you run the query again yes i think yeah, this just... should work now i'll just uh, say user by country new i think this should work uh, but but yeah my bad so sorry about that uh, 
uh, I am gonna remove the entire thing and uh, use my snippets chart. Copy this, and then put it here, and then uh, use my country new, and X will be my country, Y will be my count. Awesome. Yeah, uh, sure. sorry about that, guys. I think there's, I mean, some data has been inserted, uh, but but yeah. So this is how you uh, bind queries onto your uh, chart widget. And uh, similarly, you can try adding multiple series here. Uh, for example, in case if you want to like compare this with uh, you know one more query that's returning same data type, uh, you can you know uh, click on a new series and then you can uh, you know have like n number of series. So this is like a quick example. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how you can do the same on uh, the JS object. So let me try creating a new JS object. So I'm going to do this and uh, I'm going to bring in a new chart. Um, OK, and then I'm going to just copy the same query here and then put it on my JS object. What I'm going to do, like some minor edits here. So I'm going to say let uh, chart data equals my like the data type what your i need to fetch the data from a query so i'm gonna say let data equals uh user by country new dot data and then i'm gonna say data dot map row and then i'm gonna return the same thing let me remove this and then I'm going to say return chart data. All right, let's see what happens if we run the query on this particular function. So I'm going to hit function one dot run. And uh, this is how you should see your results. So I have the same data from my query again. Uh, but the idea is basically in case if you have more number of queries and in case if you are performing transformations on multiple queries then ideally java uh, the js editor uh, should be more comfortable and the way you bind it is uh, something similar to how you bind your queries but instead uh, you will say this object two dot and then you will run your function so and this is how you bind your data onto your chart widget from a JS object. So the process is super similar, but then there you have more code like experience when you are working with uh, more number of queries. All right, uh, so with that being said, I am gonna head it over to Joseph, uh, who will be talking more about uh, how you can, you know, use different uh, default charts uh, on AppSmith. Uh, so Joseph, over to you. All right, thanks, Bar. Um looking for the, the screen share here. Do you have to enable that for me? Yes, I'll do that. Uh, can you try sharing your screen first? I'll put it on the main stage. Okay. Uh, is it sharing? Yeah, I can I see so. the screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are we good to go? Bar, is it is it right if I start? Can you see this? Yes, yes, I can see it. You can you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, maybe can you try zooming in a bit? Awesome. Yeah, this should do. So this picks up where uh, Vahar left off. He showed how you can map over some data, and then uh, he edited the function in the JS object there so that it's easy to swap out what data you're mapping later, and then make that reusable. Um, and so I've taken that a step further. And then when you want to filter it by something or you want to sort it by a different column, um, and there's lots of different ways you can manipulate the data before you send it to the chart so that your bar graph is alphabetical uh, with the, the categories. Or maybe you want to sort it by the number instead of the label. And so there's tons of different variations. And this is just an example of how to manipulate the, uh, the data with JavaScript first and then connect it to your uh, to your chart. 
And so I've got a couple sample data sets that come with this. Um, we'll be releasing this app afterwards. And so you can pick one of these samples here and it will uh, parse through a CSV. So the first part is, is just um, breaking your file you know, into rows and, and showing how to take a CSV file and then get it into a JSON array so that you can view the raw data. And so at first, uh, it, it gives me the CSV to JSON. And now that we've got that uh, JSON array of data here, like you would get back from an API. So I've built this view to where you can pick a, <clears throat> a category that you want to group everything by, and then a numeric column um, so that you can like total or average or get the count of certain values. And you can sort it by the label uh, alphabetically or by the values um, that you're charting. And it works with <clears throat> every one of our chart types because all of these use the same structure, the same X, Y, and uh, it's just a matter of what label do you want to use for X and what uh, are you using the total or the average or just a count of. <clears throat> the count works for like uh, text values. So if I just want to um, plot, see the item type and then count the number of items of each type, um, then you can get you know, a chart of for, for this type of uh, product, we have X amount or the average if it's sales. And so with, um, with this example, you can also like upload your own CSV. Um, let me show you the other one first here. So there's two samples that come with it and it'll parse through the CSV file. Um, takes a second to, uh, to parse through all the data, but you'll see this uh, sales data here, update in a second. And we've got the, the parsed data from the periodic table here. And so now we can chart it out and say, we wanna see the phase and like the average specific heat of each one and then sort it by the, uh, the amount. Um, and so to see how this um, data that you wanna, you wanna take your raw data and get this kind of chart. Well, then you can edit the app and take the sample and, and just kind of work backwards and see how the data was transformed. Um, it's a little complex to capture this many parameters. You don't, you don't have to make it this in depth, but I made it to where I can pass in the X field, the Y field. Do I want to sort total or count? And then the, uh, which one to sort by and ascending or descending. So it's pretty much every option that you would want in manipulating the data. There's, um, there's a couple different uh, JS objects in here. I won't go through all of it uh, for this. It's just to kind of show you how, how things are set up. There's a, a file that parses the CSV and I've got this thing to check if it's numeric so it knows if it's a column it can total. Um, and then I just parse through, split each line and then map over that. And it gets a little tricky of which map do I want to do? So I've got one for counting, one for totals, uh, one for averages. And then I want to put something in a chart. So it's figure out what are all the options they selected and then which map to do and, uh, and then order it by the field that you selected in the order that you selected. Um, and I've got some defaults here. So we can say how I want to set up certain files. And so like this will default for the sales records. It'll go to, uh, I think it's region and unit cost maybe. Um, total. Oh, here we go. Total revenue. So yeah, um, it's just an example of like how to map over data and every way that you could pass uh, different parameters and functions to to sort it and get it in the right order that you want so that it displays properly here. Um, we get a numeric one. There we go. And we'll check out the live one for uploading a file. So can also uh, upload your own. CSV file and it'll parse through that, convert that to JSON so you can view it in a table. It does take a second with the bigger data sets and then, uh, and then you can insert your own data and have an app to start charting that. So let's say we wanted to look at for each year, what's the average number of appearances? Um, for, for Marvel heroes. So <laughs> you can just pick the fields. It's kind of like Tableau. Um, that's 
really what inspired me uh, to build it is the ability to like pick different fields and say, I want to chart this field against this total or average. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a charting tool. We'll be sharing a link to that after the call. That was actually awesome to see like yeah. so many data points at one. Yeah. On one screen. That's, that's phenomenal. All right. Uh, I think I can go next. Let me share my screen. Uh, just a second. I have a fix for the issue I had. I am going to quickly share that to all yeah. the folks. Uh, all right. So yeah, my bad. Uh, so I think you guys can see my screen. So what happened before was, uh, my query, uh, which is this, has an empty value here in this country. So there are two values which aren't named. And there are two people uh, who are not assigned to any country. Uh, so that's the reason why the you know chart was uh, not showing up. So what I did was here, I use a simple ternary operation to handle this. So as you can see, there is now a new uh, uh, null column here. So the way I did is really simple. So I have a ternary operation here. So in case if row dot country exists, then we show the country or else uh, we show null. Uh, so this was the issue before. Uh, in case if you don't have this particular ternary operation here, uh, the chart is going to break. Uh, so that's the advantage. So you can use JavaScript anywhere inside the platform. I couldn't figure this out first. Uh, but, but yeah, you always have JS snippets handy. You can just uh, go from our Omnipower here and then search for whatever snippets you are looking for. Uh, so yeah, over to you, uh, Pranav. Yes, sure. All right. So um, I think you guys can see my screen. All right. So this is what I could come up with. All right. I'm, design is not my strong suit. So. Uh, what I tried to do here is create a small dashboard. I took uh, 120 years data from Kegel. So this is Olympics data. Uh, it lists down all the countries that have participated, all the participants, all the medal winners and everything else, right? So I think it starts from nine, uh, 1896 to 2016. That's very big data, right? So if you just um export this into a csv it will be like 41 mbs of data so what i did over here is i plugged this data from here and then created a, a database of my own and then created a table and inserted everything there um, now that we know that there is a data what we want to do is abstract some insights from it, right? So here, as you can see, I can figure out how many events were played in 2016, right? Um, across how many sports, I can see how many teams were there, right? And then I can figure out uh, the charts that sort of gives me the idea about, you know, how the events went. So as you can see, I have plotted over here a chart that shows me the top 10 sports by the number of events uh, that were held, you know, in that sports category. So as you can see, for athletics, there were, I think, close to 47. And for swimming, um, yeah, it's it's something around 34. Uh, shall I? Yeah, just a sec. I'll just zoom in a bit more. Yeah. So now, uh, yeah. So these are the 10 sports. And after that, uh, what I want to see is I want to see the top 10 countries who participated and got most number of medals, right? So, um, yeah, here are the ones. So as always, like United States and China always fight for this fight for the title, right? So U S got around like one, one, seven medals and China got like 68 medals. That's pretty good number compared to India, but yeah, I can't do much about it. So now, how did I build this, right? Um, if you go to the chart uh, widgets that we have, you'll see that, uh, yes, all right. So let's do some charting real quick. So I'll go to the charts. I'll pull this right over here. Okay. 
so charts goes here okay so now um, this gives you a basic chart right and then as you can see there is a property pane which shows you what type of chart this is so it's a column chart but if you scroll down there is a custom chart over here but if you go there uh, it says like custom fusion charts right so what we should do is we should go and look at the docs as it as it supposed to um, you know as it says over there it it links you to the docs and if you go to the docs there is a hidden section over here which says custom chart um, and it then it tells you that we use something called as fusion charts right so think of this library as charts on steroids right so first i'll show you what i mean by that right so this is again a basic chart that you that you see over here right so let's let's build this chart out um, and actually let's build it from the data that i have right so now um, what i want to do is first i want to get the data that that i need right so uh, as i mentioned already i have a yeah i have a athlete database uh, sorry table and i'm pulling all the data from there so for convenience i'm just limiting it to 10 and as you can see like there are a lot of fields over here and what we want is we want um, the year to be 2016 uh the summer like the season to be summer because like most of us watch only summer olympics uh if there are fans out of winter olympics god bless to you <laughs> and then what we want is we also want a sport and we also want to see how many events were there for this one sport all right so let's go to um, the chart that we want to see we want to see a sport and the corresponding number of events over there so now this query what it what it does is uh it groups by the sport and it counts the number of events and now that like after running this we have this data it it sort of looks like hey we can have x axis of the name of the sport and y axis as the number of events and when we when we do that uh sorry about that and when we do that uh we have this chart right so the sport is on x axis it's all the uh, name of the sport and on the y axis is number of events so let's go to the chart manager where i have built this right um i'll just drag this down and here it is so uh let's go back to the library that i was talking about so this is fusion chart right and what you can do is you can figure out what type of chart you want um if i go to the overview there are a lot of charts over here and as you can see uh as you can see you can pick any one of these and it will give you a snippet of how uh, you should structure your javascript object around that chart right so there is a chart object which shows you caption and sort of theme and what not and then there is categories categories go on like the x axis and then there is data set which goes on y axis right uh, and that's how you should structure it but when you copy this uh, and paste it over here it will look like something like this right um uh, so yeah so now what we want is data and for this particular chart which is just a bar chart um the convention uh, as listed on fusion chart is basically you give it a label and you give it a value so label will be the sport and the value will be the count of the events right and once you do that uh, i'm just going to run this function uh, as you can see event events by sports uh you get a data structure that kind of looks like this right so there is data and now the the data we have over here is represented as the object um, that will be interpreted by our by our chart widget so if i go over here and as you can see it's just mapped to 
the function that I've written over there, right? So there is my chart object, and then there is my data. Right? So, so this is fairly easy, right? And now, um, as you can see, with the custom charts, you also have an option to change the way your charts look. You are not limited by the color scheme that the default charts offer. So if you see uh, here, I mean, the color is okay, but it looks quite, quite bland, right? But now we have this nice uh, theme going uh, wherein what I did is in the charts object, I just mentioned palette colors um, and I passed the color that I wanted and yeah, um, the color is there. So now let's jump to like, a bit more difficult chart but uh, I mean again it's really straightforward if you go to the docs uh, you just have to find the the type of chart that you want and now uh, here what my requirement is is I want to compare how many players were there uh, for a country and how many uh, medals that country won right so let's just take a look at the query, right? So we want two different things against one x-axis, right? So we want a team on x-axis and then we have two different type of data. One is number of players, another is metals. And I have to do a bit of jazz over here to get uh, the kind of data that I want. But again, this is a separate section of how you can do joins, how you can aggregate and whatnot in SQL. And this is a pretty good example of that. Uh, this code will be available for you. So uh, you can take a look at this afterwards. Uh, so yeah, once we have the data, we just have to figure out how do we want to put it, you know, uh, in a way that is that will be interpreted as this chart is. So let's go through this, right? So here is my chart and I hope uh, you can see the section over here. It has categories, right? So as I mentioned earlier as well, categories are basically your x-axis. And if you go, all right. So now I have a data set. So every time there are like multiple types of data that you want to present on one type of chart, uh, you will pass on an array of the kind of series that you want to plot. So uh, here, as you can uh, see the actual expenses, which are in violet color over here uh, is one type of series. And then there is a line, which is another type of series. And then there is area chart, which is the third type of series. So uh, we have to pass the object of the series, right? So um, data set is an array and then it will accept all the series that we have. So one such series is expenses and then there is data. So data will always have a list of values. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this theme again continues, right? So uh, once we have that, what we can do is create an object with type MS combi 2D. And again, you don't have to remember these types. Just go to the overview. Uh, and yeah, you can pick any type of chart that is listed over here. And it will show you exactly in which format that you, you know, convert it to. So this is going to be a little tricky. Uh, yes, I'm just going to pull this down a bit. Okay. So now... Uh, I'm just going to create a dummy function. Okay. And I'm going to show you why I'm doing this. So we've been getting a lot of queries uh, from people who struggle with JavaScript. I mean, it's fairly simple language, but not for everyone. So let's just, what we should do is just return the chart medals dot data. Right. And if I run this dummy function, uh, you'll see that it's a list of objects. And now there are teams, there is medal, and there, there are players, right? So uh, we needed two things, right? One is category. And as you can see, categories are 
called teams over here because we want teams on x axis so now what we are going to do categories is again an array and we are going to create the one x axis along the bottom right so category is going to be data which is chart dot chart medals dot data and then we are going to map over that whole array and because every element is an object itself we are going to say hey i want team property of that object and that's it that's all there is and now this will give us a list of all the all the teams that are there in data set we want two different two different series right one is participants another is medal so similarly the thing that i did for category i'm going to do exactly same thing for uh, you know players and for medals as well and once this is ready uh, again we just have to pass this object as data source and if i can run this again so yes all right so yeah as you can see again the labels um array that we have so sorry the categories array that we have everything will be labeled and then there are series data with values right and once we pass this data to our custom chart here it is it will just plot this array for you uh, plot this chart for you and again like because this is a custom chart what you can do is you can go to charts and say palette colors and choose the color that you want over here right and again if i just go back and what i want to do now is show you like how easy it is to go from an area chart to a line chart right so let's go over here and figure this out so i have budgeted expenses as a line right and yes here it is so the series object that we have and it says render as line i'm just going to copy this i'm going to go to my chart manager and i'm going to go to data set and there it is like participants it's fine but it says render as area and i'm just going to replace this as render as line i'm going to go back and voila it's line and similarly i mean there are a bunch of things you can again turn this into let's say you want to see the pie chart of all the countries that have received medals in these events and you can plot these um it's really simple to do uh and exactly like you just have to figure out what kind of data that it expects from here and you know mold your data into uh into the format that it expects a uh, couple of functions that you that you want to remember one is the map function which goes along with the arrays uh, in javascript you can map you can create a list from another list that's why uh, map is there uh, the second function is filter which you saw like uh, in the in the first part of this video itself right we are was struggling with some sort of data and if you don't want any sort of data um, in your chart you can just filter it uh, according to your condition uh, and and that's it um, as i said you just need to uh, need to learn a little bit of javascript and you'll be good at uh, the charts uh, now uh, i think somebody asked in the comments if we could show an action uh, right let me vihar can you point the comment uh yes Where... do, you want, do you want to go through all the questions from start uh yes we can actually somebody was asking an interesting question if they could trigger an api and then we can you know get the data so maybe uh, if you want i can make this whole thing interactive uh, quickly that would be cool right let's yeah do we have uh, time yes we do have enough time but i don't think the other questions are related to chart widget they are related to okay. list widget and some apis uh, okay. 
so yeah folks in case if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat uh, meanwhile me and pranav will go through some of the questions that were asked yes uh, pranav do you want to create a new page for this um actually i i'm just going to make this whole thing interactive uh, it's super okay. cool just oh. a sec okay yes. cool um so let's do a select widget all right and what i want to do so as i told you right there is let's say this is a select widget and yeah um the label is going to be a year right and now we don't want the this over here what i want to do is get all the years um that are there right so i'll just quickly go to get players and i'll just copy this query to the same page olympics and i'll name it as get yes okay and now sorted by year and i'm going to have distinct year okay and when i run this okay from athlete or the by ac limit then okay can we so again yes now we have this and now we can do order by um year and yes and dsc so now we have descending order and what we will do is uh put a limit of 10 again just for convenience sorry yes um okay so now we have how many 35 records okay let me run the query again okay now we have 10 records right so let's go over our select widget and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create options right so um how do we do this we say get years dot data now we have all the data as i said we want to create a list from a list so we are going to use map i'm going to say data dot sorry dot um year it was oh yes uh, okay so map and then i'm going to say item i'm going to say hey what i want over here is i want label which is item dot year and value which is item dot year again okay um and there is a syntax problem which is it should be fixed now okay. so brackets are problem today then you have to say return <laughs> whatever yeah. no no it's fine i got it got it got it yeah that's yeah. that's an idea <laughs> <laughs> yes and what we want to do is we want to say hey, our default is 2016 right so let's do 2016 yes 2016 is there and as you can see all the all the queries that are there depend on this year equal to 2016 right so what i want to do is i want to rename this filter as say year filter and i want to go here let's just try this out okay so if we fail we fail together all right uh, just a sec yeah so now uh, filter go year filter dot selected option value right and if we just do this for a sec yeah you can see year is equal to and then i'm going to again enable this and we get the record so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to trigger one query at a time right we changed the chart event so that it responds to the changes in the filter right so i'm just going to run this one query at a time so let's go on option change i'm going to say js yes. 
and I'm going to say a chart event dot run. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if this works. Okay. And let's go to 12. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. It, it right. Works. Let's go to four. Okay. Yeah. To two. I think. Oh, two was Winter Olympics. I'm sorry again for all the fans. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, what is happening. Is this right? Uh, was twelve Winter or? Oh no, there were. There was eight. Just let me see what is happening. Come on, buddy. But yeah, you get the gist, right? So again, demo gods are not very happy. But yeah, uh, why it's not triggering? Just a sec. Let me check this out again. It says twelve. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Actually, the number of events are kind of same. So that's why it's not changing. But let's see if you know we can do the same thing on medals and if that changes anything. Right. So let's do year filter dot selected value. And let's do change it over here as well. Okay. Right. And if we again remove the prepared statements, it says 12 and 12 and let's run. So United States has 117 medals, right? Voila, this works. So let's go back again and we'll do the exact same thing. What we are going to do is we are going to run chart uh, medals dot run. And okay, I'm just going to zoom out pretty much just so that we can see the everything in action all right so let's see 2016 again okay i'm going to refresh my screen once yes so there we are from 16 and we are going to go to 12 yes there we have it you see uh, it just changed just a sec i'm gonna go zoom in again and for 12 you see there are only 100 and oh less than 100 and if we go to 16 again yeah there are more than 100 events so yeah that's how you can make the whole dashboard that you have interactive you know uh, and it took me like five minutes to do that. Uh, if you if you go and build this on your own, I mean, at least weeks worth of time, right? So uh, you see the whole point of this. All right, we can we can go through the other questions now. All right, thanks thanks Pranav. That was a cool demo. Uh, but but I think there will be a lot of use cases around the same things. Uh, let's actually try playing out with different data sets and. Uh, uh, you know, try putting them as templates so that users can, you know, our community folks can directly fork and use them out. Uh, also, just yep. a quick fact, you can also play around with, uh, uh, you know, charts that you look at stock markets, uh, you know, all the trading charts. Uh, I've, I've actually written a blog post around it. Uh, so I've built the same charts uh, on AppSmith itself. Uh, usually, if I had to build them from scratch, it would have taken me around three to four days uh, Keeping in mind, keeping in my React or JavaScript experience, but with AppSmith you can just do it in like some, you know, one or two hours. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna put that blog uh, for you to go through. All right, so let's uh, go through the questions real quick. I think uh, uh, we almost crossed an hour, uh, but but yeah. Uh, so Pranav, do you wanna answer the questions? Yes, sure. Uh, All right, so let me put the first question on screen. Uh, could you please show us show an example of using an API on button click? What determines API success or failure? HTTP return codes from the API. Also for a query on button click, you can't do actions after. Oh, so um, actually you can. All right. 
um shall i do this or shall i just explain this all right uh, uh, you can just do this quick. yeah let's just do quickly all right if we go beyond time it's fine okay so uh, can you do it yes 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 just a sec okay uh, can you see my screen now yeah so uh, folks i'm just going to copy one of the queries from this and let's just copy get players actually let's copy two okay and i'm going to go page two okay and sorry i'm going to go to olympics again and i'm going to copy get yes okay this is all right so now um let's go to page 2 okay did it i think i copied somewhere else olympics i want two queries over here just to show this okay copy to page 2 okay all right so now we have these two queries right the question is if we can run these queries and how do we figure out like you know uh if they are successful and if they are how do you run the query one after the other right so right. Uh, i'm just going to create a js object okay simple and easy so this is my js object one i'm just going to say util all right and now we have an asynchronous function so uh, there is a concept of async await in in javascript um related to promises so what you want to do over here is you want to run the get players all right and don't worry about um, how we are going to trigger this anything about that let's leave it for now right so uh, what we want to do is we want to check if we successfully run the years right so let's say const uh, let's do actually try uh, and catch blocks so const um yes okay and i'm going to say get yes dot run okay and the one small change that you have to do is await over here okay uh okay yes so what this means is um, this is an asynchronous function right so uh, all the other functions that you write let, let's say again create a dummy function dummy function and everything that you write in this function um, statement 1 and again statement 2 these will be executed sequentially but in asynchronous function or or the functions that return promises uh it's not defined right like the order is not defined um and that's the problem so what do we do uh because the run function returns a promise we say hey the function that is going to call uh that is going to execute my run function is going to be async and i'm going to wait till this run functions return function returns right so uh, this make it makes it so that years will have the data that this get years query returns right and now you can just check if years dot length is greater than 0 or that is greater than 0 and if it is yeah if it is what you can do is go and create like get players dot run and now this is entirely up to you right you can say this is again await or not and these will run in sequence uh regardless of what your other logic is so now um running these queries right in sequence you can just go over here there is on click property you can say hey execute my js function go over here and that was func2 and when i click on this it ran but yeah just a sec let me actually yeah let me actually put like uh, 
show alert over here and again show alert is also an an asynchronous function so let's say we do json dot parse and we'll say yes i'm sorry i'm taking a bit of time over here but this is really important so we'll get to all the questions so now uh, as you can see we'll go over here and say again uh, const players equal to await and then we'll say players and we'll just run this function now so let's go okay just a sec what is going on here My phone two did not return any data. Okay, sorry about that. I think that's one. Yes. Yeah, as you can see, when we run this function, it will just go test one and test two, and there was some problem with the logic, I think. Yeah, as you can see, it runs in sequence. All the actions that you put over there will run in sequence. So yeah, that's a short demo for you. All right. Uh, so also in the same question, Pranav. Uh, so Dennis had actually asked in terms of APIs. He basically wanted to, you know, display the return codes after an API is running or not. So can you just quickly, like, you know, use like random users API and then show the response okay. that we get. Okay, let's let's try that. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, blank API. Oh, man. do I have to? Okay, in, I'm in just gonna try. I'm not sure about these options, but uh, I'll just type it out. HTTP. The user works. API works. Uh, this one, football. No, no, one that is in the placeholder. Uh, more oh, this one, API. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, mock hyphen API dot appsmith dot com. Okay. Slash users. Um, slash users. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, so this again runs right. So get users and let's go again in the util and this is the exact same thing. There is no difference between like. Getting users or getting, uh, you know, uh, can you actually some... show the return codes of the API like two zero to four hundred? Uh, so that that's the question. Oh, okay. Um, let me try that. Actually, even I have... it it works. Uh, you have the order fill right. It uh, it will show you the data that's coming from an API. Okay. Uh, Just users. It's no, it's it's user. fine. Okay, so you want to yeah. do like get users dot uh, data dot data. okay uh -huh. not data. I think it's meta. I think okay meta. Mm -hmm. Can we just print this? Let okay, just see. put on a text widget for uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. I can I can do that. Just yeah. a sec. So widget. Okay, so we have to get players. Get players. Uh, and yeah. all this data. You should also see the response code. Actually, just a sec. Off the top of my mind, yeah, response meta. Yeah, it says execution success is true. So you'll basically get this uh, boolean value, you know, uh, being true and false. So yeah, you know if it is valid or not in the end. So you can do response meta. I think response meta. Yes, and it gives you a execution success or not. All right. 
Uh, all right, I think we have answered that question, Dennis. Or else, feel free to come hop on to our Discord channel or post it on our community website. We are happy to answer that. All right, we'll go to the next question. Uh, can you show us how to handle a list of data coming from an API in a list widget with some action like delete an item in the list itself and the API? Oh man. Um, okay, that's a yeah, that's a straightforward thing, but it's little more like laborious for a live demo. Uh, but yeah, um, I mean, I can I can just map this to a list widget real quick. Um, okay, just do this really quickly. Okay, so here you go. Uh, there is a list. Here you go. Get players dot data and now you have this mapped already right so uh what do we want over here uh we don't so want basically for this. performing operations yeah. on this you can drag and drop a button widget on to the list item yes and then exactly. again you can write your js code there so that's how it so, essentially works yeah so even if you like create a button over here which is like delete button and then what you can do is map this to uh, an api which will delete you know this particular so again like just create a delete uh, query pass the from here what you want to do i'm just gonna do this uh, actually show you how you can pass it but not gonna write so here what you want to do is sorry delete and on click of this let's say you have a delete user right dot run and from here what you can do is just pass the id of the user so it's like um list sorry what was the name of this it's a list one okay got it right so it will be list one dot yeah uh, selected item and then you can do id of that item and that's it you use this id uh, in the uh, query that you write and yeah this is how you do it basically all right awesome the it, it's also same on the table widget but instead on row you'll have to use the selected yes. row ID. So yes. that's that's how it works. But yeah, we have a lot of documentation around this on our community forum and also on our docs. I'm gonna just put those links on the chat. Feel free to go through them. All right. Um, next question. Let me put it on the screen. Uh, so Joseph, do you wanna take this? Change the format of the time for the date picker widget. Um, are you wanting to change the format of the date picker widget itself at that one data point or the format displayed in the chart for all the data points? All right. Maybe can we address them both? Yes. Um, um, basically, you could just use moment. We have uh, the moment library built in. And so we can uh, let me start working on an example here and I can share it. If you guys want to um, show the. Actually, I already have an example. Just a second. Okay. Um, yeah, format dates with moment JS library. So, uh, if you don't know about this, uh, we have a bunch of sample applications over here, right? That you can just go to, and click on a fork button that you'll see. I'm obviously logged in, that's why I'm not able to see the fork button. But you will see a fork button over here. Click on that, and you will get your own copy of this application, right? So it tells you what sort of function that you need to use to get a formatted date, right? So now there are a bunch of dates formatted over here. You can get like, just copy this snippet of code and pass in your date in the moment function and it'll be formatted for you. Simple as that. All right, now that Pranav had uh, bought sample, to sample apps into the picture, there's gonna be a huge update to sample apps. Uh, so stay tuned for it and uh, you all guys will love it. Uh, cool. With that being said, let me go to the next question. Uh, so I think Pranav, I think this question is for you. Are there any benchmarks on number of 
number of API queries or JS objects that a single page can handle. Want to know if there has been stress tested in this regard? Okay, um, you kind of put me on the spot there, but uh, I I don't have an answer for you right now. Um, I think uh, if you could just ping us on Discord, I can get you the exact answer from our engineering team. So yeah. Um, yeah, please, please reach out to us on Discord. Uh, even if you do it right now, uh, I think Jimmy is there and he can start a discussion internally. Uh, so yeah, uh, I actually have an answer for that. We okay. have been, uh, you know, getting at questions around this. I have actually documented on the community website. Let me see if I can uh, bring that up. All right. So you are doing gotcha question for me. All right. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, but good question. Uh, All right, there are a lot of questions on the community app. Let me try searching that and put that on the chat. What ideally AppSmith should be able to handle most of the things. Uh, yeah. And that being said, uh, you know there are certain rules that can make make your app faster. For example, if you are loading like data with thousand rows pagination should be definitely, uh, you know, be configured in that way. You can, you know, bind all your data into multiple pages and then AppSmith could also, you know, handle your data. So there are a bunch of things that you can configure in case if you are working with, uh, you know, large amount of data, but, but I'll, uh, bring, get back to you with the exact answer for that. All right. So we have other questions. Uh, this is again from Dennis, will the navigate two page function works in JS objects. Yes, sir. It does. Um, and again, it's, it returns promise. So if you want to do like, uh, a sequential navigation, you can do that. Like, um, let's say what you want to do is you have a specific login screen for your application. You want to log in user, like send a request, uh, get the token from your backend and save that token and then navigate to some other page. Uh, what you should do is use the asynchronous function and, you know, uh, put await in front of store value, put await in front of navigate to, and it will run in sequence. Yeah. You can definitely use that. All right. Uh, meanwhile, I had the luck of finding that question. Uh, so let me rephrase the question here a bit. So the question is what are the best practices to, you know, get, uh, the best out of apps with. Uh, so there are certain rules you can follow in case if you are dealing with large amount of data. Uh, but, but yeah, we will definitely answer your question. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, on discord. Uh, but these are some of the rules, uh, you can follow, uh, just to make your app more efficient and most more faster. All right. Uh, so we have one, uh, very good comment, which all three of us will love La live, uh, awesome live. Thank you. Thank you. Mac max. All right. Uh, so again, we have one more question with, uh, from Max of to make it timeout on login. If user doesn't input info in 30 to 60 seconds. Okay. Um, I think this should be a set timeout. Um, like the solution is obviously a set timeout. Um, right. But, um, as of today, uh, AppSmith does not support it. Uh, Frankly, we already have this on our radar and it will be available soon. So yeah, uh, we can do it with set interval though. If the function has a condition yeah, that it checks, so like you just have a function that keeps running every, you know, five seconds or 10 or whatever mm -hmm. at the start and then check to see if they've filled in whatever value or if they've logged in or stored something in the app Smith store. And so like, uh, it could just keep redoing the loop until it gets to the fifth count or six. If you're doing five seconds and you want to go 30, you know, so do like six loops. And then if it's still not there, then you exit the loop and, and go to the logout page or something. Right. And also one good thing with AppSmith is that you can track every property of in widget. For example, in case if users are entering data in, uh, in your input, you can track like every change, uh, say for example, that's how the page duration search works as soon as you you know, enter any keywords or key terms in your table search, then the API gets automatically calling. So similarly, I think in this case, we can use a set interval when, you know, the user is typing, uh, certain, uh, you know, characters on the input. 
all right so there is this one more question i am not able to change the time format in chart widget hmm um we might have to take a deeper look at that uh, can you yeah just reach out to jimmy on discord he'll he'll get you sorted uh, yeah it's, but it's simple I, yeah but ideally using moment it should be uh, yes it should be know, fine be working uh, or else alternatively i think there might be some configuration issue on your chart uh if you go look at our documentation uh, you'll have bunch of examples on how you can configure chart widget or else uh, we are anyway there on discord active so feel free to post your question there uh i think, next I think we just have to manipulate the data first because if if you have a chart widget or an input widget that's a type date or whatever that's a single data point the widget properties have formatting options built right into the ui it's just picking something in the widget properties but when it comes to uh the chart widget if the data happens to be a date i don't think we have that same formatting option so you would have to map over your data first using moment and get it in the format yeah. you want to see it on the chart and and then it's going to look right on your chart um but it's not like a date picker widget where you can have it in unix time but then you display it to the user in a different format i don't think we can do that with the chart widgets properties you just have to edit your data first to have the right format all right uh so the next question is from gabriel uh sorry i missed this earlier so is there any forecast on release of oracle database uh so gabriel i think you are already tuned to the conversation that's going on our uh github uh, uh we, we have noticed your uh, request there and uh, we will definitely prioritize this uh we will take this to our team and uh, we will get this feature out as soon as possible but at this point of time it's hard for us to confirm a date Uh, but i've just uh, shared you the issue on the chat so feel free to you know give it a thumbs up or give it an upvote and we'll definitely prioritize it and then you know try to get this feature out as soon as possible uh so next we have a, one more question from gabriel is there any way to schedule a task to run example i would like to run an api query every day at 8 am this this is a question that uh, pranav uh, you know answers on discord regularly so pranav over to you yes so um appsmith is not like appsmith is not built for uh, you know doing like or scheduling any task right but what you can do is there are a bunch of open source projects like i'm just going to promote entertain right so I you can yeah, yeah you can basically integrate with that and it will run a job for you right and then everything else you can do on apps so uh, but one quick hack here in case if it is just as simple as this like running a qu query every day at 8 am you can use the set interval function <laughs> and, and that works for sure <laughs> yeah but again that's a that's a cheeky hack right like <laughs> yeah you have that client like a certain computer yes. somewhere that stays open with that browser on that page so that it can keep running at interval yeah And ideally that's something that happens on the server that's not dependent on one user being logged in viewing a certain page. So uh, that's where something like N8N would be great to like use that service where it runs on the server side and you can set a schedule and it'll just work regardless. You don't have to have a page that stays open with a timer running. Um yes. if you did want to do it just in AppSmith though that you know you could set a, a set interval and just have that function run and maybe have it say if uh you know run every hour or something and if it's like the 8 o'clock hour if that's when you want it to run then it, then it would execute whatever yeah all right um i think we have answered most of the questions uh so uh, i'm going to add some more points to what joseph had said so we are also working on rts systems uh, we are going to take up uh, that sometime really soon uh, so feel free to search for them on our github issues you can search for for sockets or rts and uh, uh, you know you can see our progress there uh, so we do everything in public so in case if you need a feature or in case if you want to know an update on any feature that you have already requested for feel free to come on to our github and feel free to explore or you know browse through our issues alternatively you can also reach out to us on discord or intercom or community you will see us uh, there and uh, we will we are most happy to answer your questions 
Uh, so with that being said, uh, I think this is so far the longest. How do I do access session we have pulled off? Uh, uh, thank you all for joining. I I can see still there are people there listening to us. Uh, this this means a lot. Uh, so we will be back with our sixth. How do I do X session uh, in the next month? Uh, so in case if you have any questions that we would like to answer, uh, you can you know give upvotes on our Discord. You can just uh, let us know on uh, you know any of uh, our community websites. So and we will definitely gonna take this up in the next How do I do X session and. Uh, Next week we are having our release jam. So Joseph uh, will be talking about all the new features that we have shipped uh, in the last thirty days. I hope Joseph has uh, you know already uh, he knows all the updates that are already being shipped. So I'm super excited yeah, to see, see see Joseph doing a demo of everything. Yeah. All right. Uh, That's so be Mac, awesome. are, sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I'm see. always excited about the new features. Yeah, right. So Max asks our uh, Discord channel link. So it should be there everywhere. But for you, I'm gonna just put it on chat. Um, copy link address. Yes, I've just shared you a link to our Discord. Uh, so feel free to hop on in, say hi to us, and let us know what you're building on apps with. Cool. Uh, with that, uh, thank you all guys for joining. Thanks, uh, Pranav and uh, Joseph. Uh, I'm I'm super excited for the release jam and also the next how do I do X session. Until then, uh, build the best internal tools. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a nice time, folks. Bye. Bye.